Hi, everybody. I'm Mark no Waite. Oh, go ahead, John. Okay. No, no, uh, just okay. So, sorry. Great. I'm Mark Waite. This is the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's a question and answer session where we'd like to be able to ask, allow anyone to ask questions and get answers about how to create Jenkins documentation, how to deliver it, how to help it. Um, we'll be doing these as long as there's a need. Right now, the plan is about once a week and uh, delighted to host them whenever. We do adhere to the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Uh, the Jenkins Code of Conduct means that we are expected to be respectful, kind, and considerate to one another. Uh, violations of the Code of Conduct are brought to the Jenkins Board and handled there. So please, if you feel uncomfortable or uneasy about something, let me know and we'll, we'll worry about it and take care of it. So this is being recorded. Thanks very much. Um, first off, I was going to give an overview of materials of what I had envisioned for office hours. And then we can talk about, is that what you want to do? Or would you like to do something different for today? So I'm going to share my screen. And let's look at what I've got for a, a draft outline. So here's what, what I'd propose is, oh, let's put down who's attending. There we go. So my thought is this is a question and answer session. That's our first and foremost objective here. Whatever questions you have of any sort, you're welcome to ask them. You can ask them either verbally you could submit them as changes in this document, or you could ask them in chat in the session. One way or the other, we want to collect them. And, and after collecting them, we'll try to answer them. I like to do examples and demonstrations so that you can see things and get a hint. And we will record this so that we can use post a, the recording and use it later. Um, any questions so far? Sounds good. No, no, no. Sounds good to meet you. All right. Okay. So one question is, how do I build the Jenkins build the Jenkins site docs from source? Right. It's a valid question. Another question might be, can we have meetings at a different time? Uh, I suspect there are some contributors who may be in Asia, others who may be in Eastern Europe or in Western Europe. And we've got people who are willing to host office hours during European morning hours, Oleg Nanashev, uh, or during the European afternoon or the US morning, or in US afternoon and even into the evening. Uh, we don't right now have anybody who is explicitly in what I might call prime Asia, like uh, Beijing or Australia, who's willing to host an office hour there. But we've got most of the 24 hours covered some way. Uh, right now, we're going to do them at this time, and we'll, we'll adjust times as we see a need or cancel them if we don't have a lot of interest. Uh, another question that, let's see, other questions, what's Google season of docs? And that, I assume, is an interesting one because it's one way to contribute to the project. Another might be, how do I get involved? Another might be, what are the tools that I get involved with? Yet another might be, what are the current projects that the Jenkins project is working on? What are the current documentation projects? So, Jonathan and Vlad, are there questions you would like to add to the list? Or are some of these that you think would be higher priority, you'd like to do those first? Um. Well, just I wanted, uh, not necessarily today, but in the future, something that I'm uh, interested in, in, like getting more understanding uh, about the relationship between uh, documentation or uh, hosted in Jenkins IO repository and documentation for plugins. Uh, the relationship and how um, well, best practices maybe for handling the, that relationship based on previous experience of contributors and developers of Jenkins project. 
Okay, so so is this things like how how do I decide where to place some information? Or how do users experience it? Tell me more about the kinds of things. Uh, well, uh, here is just one of the use cases which emerged just today. I was working on documentation for monitoring plugins. Uh, well, updating monitoring page, which is hosted by Jenkins IO. And uh, when I'm referring to those plugins, documentation for plugins is hosted by Jenkins CI, as I understand. And um, when we change documentation, who is going to change documentation for specific plugins and how we uh, um, manage uh, our relationship with, I guess, developers who are doing uh, development of specific plugins. Good, okay, so how do developers interact with, with technical writers? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. All right. Uh, I believe the section uh, speaking about Google Docs season, uh, it's a a good beginning because I want to know how works the job and uh, how we need to work together to to write uh, a lot of um, docs that you plan to in this season. Okay. So. Jonathan, right. this one is of interest to you. What is Google Season yeah. Docs? Great. All yeah, right. not is not about what is, but about the kind of job that we realize we, we execute on them. Okay, so tell me tell me more about that question. I'm not sure I'm following it entirely. So could you elaborate a little further? Yeah. It's for, for no more about the plans for, for Jenkins Elaborate to us we'll work together. Okay, so it is it's what types of projects would be included in Google Season of Docs? Is that sort of what you're asking? No, or, no. no, no, not a kind of projects because the website uh, has a list with the projects, right? Uh, I want to know uh, how, how we work the process of the job. So, for example, um, where you use the tools, uh, where how we can help with uh, some beginnings and uh, newscomers yeah. activities. Okay, good. Okay, so how does the Google Season of Docs process work? How can new contributors help? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. So maybe maybe then this that sounds like there's a good a good opportunity there to describe how our project ideas our projects how will the technical writer be selected selected that does Google season of docs and how are projects selected. Are those sort of questions that you're asking or? It's amazing one, it's amazing, thank you. Okay, good, all right. Can, good. I, add, can I add to this list also one more point? Yes. How mentors are selected? Okay, yes. How are mentors selected? Good, all right. Okay, any other questions around? I think that's a good first set already. We can dive into that together and look at them together and then have a discussion. Sounds yeah. good. Okay. I please. agree. All right, so let's, I think what I'm going to organize these sort of in, I'm going to take a different, take the how can new contributors help uh, to towards the bottom because that one applies to anything. It applies much more widely. 
Well, maybe actually, you know what? Maybe let's put that very first. Ugh. Let's put that one very first just as it was because one of the key decisions is in choosing which who the technical writer is that would be selected for Google Season of Docs is how are they interacting with the community already? So let's talk about how can new contributors help first and then we'll go into others. So new contributors can help in the with uh, what we'd call friendly issues. And you can find friendly issues on GitHub. I'll link to them. Let's go to GitHub, Jenkins.io. Here in the issues list. And if we look at issues that are good first issue, and I'll embed this link into that document so that we've all got it. So if we go here, choose an issue, uh, assign it to yourself, start work, ask questions, submit a pull request, and uh, work with the reviewers, with reviewers. So that, that one there applies to anyone, whether in Google Season of Docs or elsewhere, the, you can always pick up a friendly issue and work on it. Now, as part of the Hackfest coming up May 25th, you're going to be focusing on user experience and a significant portion of the user experience is documentation. So documentation uh, as a key part of the user experience. And you can join the, join the Hackfest sessions that will start the May, May 25 through 29. Any questions on how to contribute at the high level? No, it's okay. It's a normal process. Okay. Just like I have a question, uh, Mark, about uh, this um, uh, Hackfest, which is co uh, coming on May 25. Is it the proper time to ask this question? This, this is a great time to ask. Please go ahead. Um, so uh, this Hackfest will be related to UX. Are we going to discuss, uh, like there will be sessions discussing uh, just user uh, documentation or also the process of building documentation, automating this documentation and how it is related to general builds of uh, Jenkins IO and so on. Uh, there, there will be a session, session presented by, by me on uh, contributing to docs. Mm -hmm. And it will include a demonstration of, of tools, techniques, etc. Thank you. Okay, in addition, we've got the Google Season of Docs project ideas. Now project ideas are an important concept of, of a, the Google Season of Docs process. They are not a project plan yet. A project idea is a concept that someone in the community proposes that then a technical writer will refine that, that idea or their own idea and submit, it, submit something that becomes their proposed plan. And that's the thing that Google Season of Docs will then e evaluate, is the plan. The ideas are just concepts or topics that might be considered. So don't, don't mistake that, oh, because there's this, this idea out there that, oh, there, there's a whole bunch on it or that I have to do exactly that. No, you're welcome to explore further. You're welcome to do, propose something different. All, all are, are valid. So here's the link to the Google Season of Docs page and you see the, 
the project ideas. They include things like migrating from the wiki, document Jenkins on Kubernetes, lots and lots of interest for Jenkins on Kubernetes, but not nearly enough documentation on Jenkins on Kubernetes. Uh, reorganize the existing documentation set, create new pages yeah. for use cases. Sorry, was there a question? Yeah, hello. Go ahead. Yeah, so basically for me, I'm a, I'm a new combine to software existing open source contribution. So getting started for me is kind of challenging. Though I've been able to clone the document, um, the repo, but to start has been kind of easy for me. I've went through every of the document, but it's still not well uh, explained for me to get started. So I don't know if there's any help anyone can render for me on how to go about it. There, there certainly is. And so let me put a different topic here is how about where can I find help? Okay, yeah, um, I think that's, that's actually great. I know a lot of guys out there are kind of stuck like I'm, I am presently. Sure, so let's, the Jenkins, Jenkins Docs Gitter channel as people that listen, that watch it periodically and try to help out. So let's go there and we're going to grab a link to that and I'll just paste it there. You can ask questions directly in this Gitter channel and okay. about once a day at least, uh, at least once a day I'll be on there. Others are on there oh. off and on and that's a great place to ask a question. Oh, oh. Thank you for that. Another is the Jenkins Docs mailing list. Mm, and, okay, yeah. And that you'll find here in Google Groups under Jenkins documentation. And again, it has a, a, a number of users and those people tend to help each other. So oh. that's a good place to ask questions as well. Okay. All right. Anything okay, else? Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, so we've talked through how can new contributors help. If you've got no other questions on that, let's talk some other topics like how will technical writers be selected for Google Season of Docs? And in order to get to that one, I think we've got to go to the overview and timeline and talk about the, the what things are happening and when they are happening. So what I'd say is let's open up overview here and make it bigger so that I can read it. All right, so Google Season of Docs is an opportunity for technical writers to come together with open source projects to help improve the open source projects documentation. So the assumption yeah. is you've got some technical writing experience. Uh, the idea is you'll spend a few months working closely with a community to bring your skills to help the project's documentation. And at the same time, you learn about that open source project and about some new technologies. So the technologies we're using for documentation in our case are centered around the GitHub workflow, pull requests, ASCII doc, and a site that's generated programmatically. Okay. So now in terms of what happens, the, the Season of Docs program organizations like Jenkins sub apply to be mentor organizations with project ideas, we've done that. We've been accepted as a mentor organization. Then technical writers explore the organizations and choose projects that interest them. And then you write up a project proposal and submit it to Google Season of Docs. Notice that this is not me writing it up, it's you. So the writers who want to be in Google Season of Docs submit their proposal and 
then the organization selects the projects they would like to mentor. The technical writer, when they're accepted, spends time working with them to complete the project. And then at the end of the program, it's announced success or failure, etc. Questions on that high level picture? Yeah, I have a question about this topic. Uh, I can speak, right? Yes. Yeah, all right. So, uh, the main idea is I'm, as a technical writer, I build a plan propose, a project proposed, sent to you, and uh, if it's selected, uh, we start to work with, right? But uh, uh, I don't know about the Jenkins necessities. So, for, for example, in Google, Google Seasons uh, website, I see there we have a, a plugin documentation and update necessity to migrate a, uh, from the old wiki, I, I know, I guess, and from the new one in GitHub, yeah. right? Yeah. This is on proposed plan, right? So uh, how can I uh, know what is the necessity for work on this? because it's my first time, time interacting with Jenks. So I needed some hints to yeah, yeah. build my, my project proposal. Right, yeah. good. That's a very reasonable question. So I think, Jonathan, yeah. I think what you're asking is, how can I, as a new arrival on, on this thing, Jenkins. possibly propose a plan when I don't yet understand the details? Right. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, right. You're Very right. good. Yeah. I, 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 you certainly don't know how to do any of the things that are described here, or may not yet, because you may not have done any work with the Jenkins project documentation. It's perfectly yeah. reasonable. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know how to do this. It's, yeah. it's how can I possibly give you a plan? And the answer yeah. is embedded in the timeline. So, so that's very, very good. You hit, you hit it very well. Uh, the timeline will take us through how we get you to that knowledge before you submit your plan. Nice. Okay, so what we do is we're now at May the 18th. So we are in this period here where we're in what's called technical writer exploration. This period lasts until June 8th. This period is where you discuss project ideas with mentoring organizations and learn that have the technical experiences you need so that you can create a good plan. So during this phase, I expect that you will be submitting pull requests. You'll be reviewing documentation. You'll be experimenting with Jenkins. You'll be finding problems and asking questions about those problems, that this is a very active phase for you so that you can learn what, what the components of a good plan would be. And so that you understand, so that you don't say things in your plan that the people reviewing the plan look at it and say that is outrageous. It won't help anyone to say, say that. So, so the idea is you in this period between now and the 8th of June, enter into discussions and the discussions are typically done by proposing changes. You pick a, a wiki page and you transform it into Jenkins.io or you help with some project on a, a change of one sort or another. You pick a bug report and fix that bug. And the process of you doing that work will give you the experience you need so that you can enter into this technical writer application period and be ready to then, let's see, so, now, so technical writer applic, oh yeah, so June 8th to June 9th, so if to, so beginning June 9 starts the application period. You have then one month to prepare your proposal. In that month, you continue contributing. You continue exploring. You continue looking at different aspects of the project plan that you're going to propose. And as you do that, your abilities increase and you're able to give a better plan so that when we get to this July 9 deadline for applications, you've got a good plan that you're ready to submit for as an application. 
I get that idea, uh, but uh, it's possible, for example, you or everyone uh, that have more experience with Jenkins, uh, make a bunch or a collection of uh, uh, beginnings text, te tasks. For example, I saw in the GitHub there is a label uh, called newcomers issues, for example, uh, but uh, I don't know what I can pick or not. Because I know how to use AskDocs, Markdown, uh, GitHub work process workflow, but uh, I need a point to start because there is a lot of links, a lot of docs for, uh, to read, and uh, I need a a start point. All right. Very good, yeah. and and that's oh, go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Um, yeah, like what Mr. Jonathan actually said, there's this part when I actually cloned the project, I forked it and I have the repo on my own account. So I went through the doc. So I was kind of lost. I don't even know where to get started from. So now I had to go back to GitHub. Going back to GitHub, I went to issues. So I see a lot of uh, issues on the but I still don't know, okay, if the, where am I going to start from, even viewing any of the issues that is here. So I think what, that is one of the things we need to break down so that, okay, as a newcomer, if I'm coming for the first time, I should be able to know that, okay, the first step is for me to get the a repo running on my own local machine. Then from there, I proceed from the, uh, okay, writing a proposal, if that is the next thing to do. And if that is not the next thing to do, I should be able to know the next thing in line for me to actually do so that I'll be able to contribute to the success of the project. Great. So I think, I think what, you, what, you sh what I would recommend is that you go to the, the, the list of issues. Let's see if I can find my issues here. Okay. So this is... Jenk the Jenkins.io website's GitHub repository yeah, I'm, the issues I'm, tab. I'm on that. Great. Okay, yeah, I'm on issues. Okay, cool. Uh huh. And then here under label. Yeah, I'm on. So good I'm first in. issue. And you could okay. choose one of these. And the technique you use is you read it and say, yeah. hey, is this. Is this top in topic interesting to me? If okay. it is interesting to you, you could assign it to yourself by clicking this assign yourself link that I'm hovered over. And that's saying, okay. I'm going to assign myself. If you then choose not to assign it, you could give it back. So it's, okay. and, and this is your chance to say, okay, I'm going to try this. Now you might say, oh, that, that is not the issue I want to work on. Then you unassign it. Okay. Now, as okay. part of working on that issue, you'll learn many, many things as you, how do I fork the repository? How do I submit a pull request? How do I update my local repository? All very good and useful things to learn, and you'll have helped the project as well. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, the good first issue, it's a tag, so we begin. It's a good one point to start mm -hmm. using this label. Right, nice, thank you. Well, and, and this, the good first issue label is still evolving. We've got the six right now that are open. By the time we start the Hack Fest next week, I expect to have double or triple that number available. Uh, this. These issues that you see here have been created by my looking at um, the wiki pages to see which ones need to be translated. And many of these are related to that or some other piece of the project's needs. Uh, if, if, as an example, you're interested in, maybe you're interested in writing code that is related to the building of the site, then this one, this author macro, lets you 
get involved in ASCII doc generation, can the process of converting ASCII doc into the web pages. Um, you may say, no, no, I want to do something different, but this is a, is one topic. Another might be, oh, I'm interested in the ways that, that the Jenkins project uses artwork. This one is a good choice for artwork. Uh, there are many different places you can contribute and any one of them will give you experience in the workflow and cause help you discover problems or things that should be better described or should be help you should be yeah should be described better so that you can contribute more effectively another point mark Yes. Uh, for example, one of the sh issues is migrate to Linux uh, installation guides to Jenkins.io. Uh, for example, here we have the checkbox with the tasks, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, there is some kind of uh, sample to guide us uh, beyond the creation page, for example. A, a, uh, how can I say it? A, a guide, a module to, to, to allow us to know how to, what I can write and uh, format the page, this, things like that or not? That, that's a very good question. So, so there certainly are what, what this particular type of issue report is structured to do is trying to tell us we want to convert from the old thing this page here, the Jenkins on Red Hat Wiki page. Oh, this yeah. Is, this I is the some. old thing. And wait patiently, it takes forever to load. So, but you see, here's the look, the old thing where it says, ah, this is how I install, configure with some important notes that are glaringly absent. This, the install instructions, I've migrated myself, but this piece is missing. So it's one of those, oh, okay, how would we say that? So that's the from. Now here's the to. So this is the destination. And here you see the destination is this page on Jenkins.io where we're trying to put it. I get now, it, yeah. Now as the, as the really cool secret, where, but where is this page in the source code? Right, because it's it's all lovely that I can see it on Jenkins.io, but I can't edit it right on Jenkins.io. I have to find the source code. If I jump to the yeah. bottom of this page, all the way scroll down to the bottom. Oh well, this is taking a long time. There, down at the very bottom of this page, there's this link. Improve this page. If I click that link, improve this page, it will take me right into GitHub. Now I know exactly the page to modify. Even yeah. if I do nothing with this page, I have found the page to change. <laughs> yeah. And so my first action is, oh, cancel. I don't, I don't want to edit it here because I have, a, <laughs> I have a really good editor, actually. My good editor will do things much better than this. So, okay. so, but that gives this me a chance. Great. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, so the, the, the power of that technique is, ah, there, there are already tools that will let me find this. Now, if while you're reading, and certainly you'll be reading, you may realize, oh, here's this mistake on this page. Well, notice here this hyperlink report a problem. If I click on any page, so let's let's choose a different page. This time we're going to choose the using Jenkins page on credentials. And I found a problem here. I click report a problem and it will put me right into the creation process for a brand new GitHub issue. So so again, it's simple simplified for my benefit so that it's easy for me to submit a bug report. I'm not going to submit this bug report. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, just another another question mm -hmm. about this topic. Yet, uh, for example, 
we are migrating all the data from to, to destiny and there is a, a step of installations, right? Uh, we need to re replay, uh, reproduce all steps, steps by steps, and uh, put a screenshot for sample or we'll make some videos or not, just text one. Well, so we, we are delighted to have screenshots. We have a few videos. We typically tend to host our videos on YouTube and right. embed a, a reference to the video into our pages. The, the, it's most common, you'll find that most of the documentation is very heavy on words with relatively few screenshots and even fewer videos. Okay. It's one of the, one of the problems is many of us um, do not have great screen presence. You, you look at me, I'm balding, uh, almost mm -hmm. 60 years old, <laughs> Et cetera. The content is more important. <laughs> right. right, that's a good way to say it. That was a very delicate way to say it, yeah, Jonathan. Very good. Not saying Mark isn't a particularly pretty person to look at, but rather the content is more important. That's a good way to say it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, hello. Yeah, um, I was just thinking along when you were explaining every of these things. Okay, let's say, for instance, the process we have on the wiki page, which is the old version of the documentation, right? So and we are trying to migrate it to the Jenkins.io, which is the current one that we are working on. So I'm thinking, what of if the process that is in the old version, which is in the wiki page, there's a kind of breakage, like something breaks, maybe the installation, uh, the one you have on, uh, wiki page is the old version uh, package. So how do we know as a technical writer, how do we know the one to put in the current page? So one way is to assume that what's written on the wiki is correct and place it into the new page and then allow okay. the code review process to tell you that, oh, that's not, not right. Uh, that's that's certainly one way to do it. The other is try it yourself. If you have okay, access okay. to a to the the right computer, you should by all means try to do what the thing is that you're documenting. Okay. Okay. Now, many so, many users, you may say, "Oh, all I have is Windows, and this is describing Linux," or "All I have is Mac okay. OS, and this is describing Windows." And so, many times, you may have to write without being able to experience everything that's described in the document. Okay, like you experiment it yourself. Correct, right. So, yeah. but you can, you can also be comfortable and confident that there are others who will review the documentation that you're proposing and will give you yeah. feedback on it. Now, it, yeah. at least for me, I find it, I find it, I would like the original submitter to have done the work that I think they could do. So for instance, if you write something and it's clear that you, you had access to something that could test it and you never tested it, I find that not as helpful. If you can test it, mm. you should test it. Yeah, correct. Mark, may I ask uh, well, a couple of questions related to uh, well, uh, first of all, there is documentation on Jenkins.io about the projects which are part of HackerFest, which will start in one week. Are those projects or ideas? And uh, this is the question related to time frame, because when we looked at Google uh, uh, doc about GSOD, the time frame for selecting projects and announcing projects was in the middle of August. And our page tells that this project are already, we have several projects for documentation. So are those projects or ideas and just maybe. So to use this precise terminology that Google Season of Docs uses, there isn't any Google Season of Docs project uh, accepted yet for the Jenkins, for, for Jenkins. There are project ideas, 
and the ideas are offered to our writer candidates as possible possibilities they might consider. Mm -hmm. But none of them are projects in the sense of a Google season of docs. Projects are selected by the organization administrators and the mentors during this, during this selection phase here, July 9 through July 31. Mm -hmm. So did that answer your question, Vlad? Yes, let me reiterate. So those are in our terminology, just ideas, not yet projects. They haven't materialized into projects. That is correct. So these, and, and I like that phrasing. That's a very good way to phrase it. Let's drop the word project. These are just ideas or concepts that have been tossed out as clear needs by people who are participants in the Jenkins project and in Jenkins, but they are not staffed. They are not in any condition of permanent ongoing effort. People in, the, in, the, in Jenkins make progress on them when they feel like it. And they don't make progress on them when they don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. And well, next question, which comes out of this answer. Uh, when, in case some of those projects will be stopped, how people participating in discussion and contributing in ideas will can participate in actual projects not ideas and how uh, like the question about the sponsorship maybe or um, um, are those based on just volunteering work or is it some kind of uh, uh, um, compensation for this work in terms of uh, money compensation. Good, good question. So the, the, I believe Google season of docs has a compensation portion, although I have not done the research on it. So let's take a quick look at it and see if we can find that just a moment. Uh, because I, I know Google summer of code with the university students that runs just over the summertime does in fact compensate the contributors. It compensates the students. Let me double check this. I think that, let's see, Google season of docs, Google season of docs, uh, payment maybe is a good word. Technical writer stipends. Here we go. Good. Okay. Okay. So Google uses Payoneer to pay a stipend to technical writers who successfully complete season of docs. It is a single stipend, single payment paid at the end of documentation development. The amounts are calculated based on home location. Mm -hmm. and, so, and here they say base amount of 6,000 US dollars and then adjusted to each, based on each country's purchasing power parity. Mm -hmm. So minimum 2,400 US dollars, maximum 6,600. Mm -hmm. And this in case if uh, contributors will be selected as technical writers, um, this kind of payment, and in case if this idea will be materialized in the project and it will be selected by Google. You are correct. So. So the stipend is only paid after successful completion mm -hmm. and it's after development is complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. I had not done the research, so thanks for letting me learn with you. And uh, on mentoring, I know that uh, Jenkins project, Jenkins project organization can be selected as mentor organization, but individual mentors, uh, those may be not necessary technical writers. They may be, as I understand, uh, software engineers, programmers, or just regular people willing to uh, have, who have some experience. And is there any kind of compensation for that quite category of people? For mentors. for mentors, I don't believe there is. I'm not aware of any compensation for mentors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, as far as I know, entirely part of the 
It's just assumed that they're part of the project and therefore Google season of docs definitely has no contribution comp, no payment to mentors. And I see nothing here on season of docs either. So mentors are not compensated. Mm -hmm. And to just for, for precision, the mentors in general will not be technical writers because we don't have many, we don't have any dedicated technical writers that that's all they do on the project. What we have are people like me, let's see, 15 years as a manager in technology, some years as a programmer, et cetera, but, and, and I speak English, but that's about the limits, right? Calling me a technical writer is, I've, I've created training, I've presented training, but I'm not a technical writer. I'm happy to write. I write because it helps. Thank you. Uh, so did that answer your question, Vlad? Absolutely, yes. Great. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure is it related or not, just general questions. Uh, or do you want to go through agenda first? And I guess well, I, I'm actually fine with questions. Go ahead and ask your question and we'll go back to the agenda to be sure we're okay. Mm -hmm. Just a general question about the hosting of Jenkins IO documentation. Uh, is it hosted on Azure right now and we're trying to migrate to one of public cloud providers or is it a misconception? Maybe good a good question. So let's let's put let me put that in. So um, so where where is Jenkins.io hosted? And what's the plan? What's your plan? All right. So um, the Jenkins project uh, is a community effort, right? Uh, infrastructure is donated. Is donated. Uh, the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Uh, provides funds for a portion of the infrastructure. Uh, Amazon provides funds, provides uh, credits for a portion. Mm -hmm. um, for the three years prior to up until December of 2019, Microsoft Azure provided mm -hmm. credits Mm -hmm. through December 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those, those donors, and we have hope that someday Google will provide, or maybe IBM Cloud, so donors provide the infrastructure. Currently, uh, Azure is the host for Jenkins.io at the moment, uh, and for ci.jenkins.io, the master, AWS hosts ci.jenkins.io agents. And we may move things around based on who's willing to fund us and how they're willing to fund us. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you very much for answering. And also related to this question uh, about creating accounts on those public providers, are those accounts accounts donated by those corresponding organizations and uh, in case if contributors or mentors or technical right well some people contributing to the Jenkins project would like to test uh, hosting deployment all this documentation on specific uh, cloud provider how can they proceed without having an account or should they have account? So how does a how does a contributor request compute capacity, right? For right. for or request capacity for compute disk etc. Exactly. Is that a fair way to say state your question? Yes. Okay. So the 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 first preference is prefer to use existing infrastructure like ci.jenkins.io. Uh, that gives us access to Linux, Windows, uh, 
S390X for those who know mainframes, PowerPC, and ARM64. And it's run on a Jenkins server. Mm -hmm. Now, if you say, oh, I need to do interactive experimenting with this thing, then the next is prefer to use your own workstation, your own computer, mm -hmm. because if your machine won't run it, it probably is broken for someone else. Mm -hmm. That's that's correct assumption. Yeah, so if, if none of those work, uh, we'll need to discuss further. Because right now we don't have, uh, we, we don't have a way to generally lend out capacity mm -hmm. to share capacity, infrastructure capacity without becoming an infrastructure administrator. Mm -hmm. And I'm hesitant to give anybody infra admin capabilities that doesn't absolutely require it. Okay. We've had, we've had one too many places where people used some unsecured Jenkins instance on the public internet to crypto mine, to go, go computing Bitcoin or something. And we'd rather not have that, our infrastructure used that way. Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, thank you for clarifying this. And if you don't mind one more question, uh, until I, I didn't forget it. Uh, so, if contributors, for instance, uh, providing new documentation, making the build and creating pull requests, and this is uh, uh, merge approved, for instance, this is the start of the process. Uh, when the actual result of this pull request, we can see on Jenkins.io site. So I guess it is the question about when we can, how this contribution will result in the actual build which will be deployed to the hosting site. Yeah, so immediately. It's, you should expect that, well, in fact, I had it just today. Jenkins 2.237 was released this morning. Mm -hmm. And the Jenkins change log for that release had not yet been published. I published it and 30 or 45 minutes later, or I, I merged the pull request on Jenkins.io, 30 or 45 minutes later, it was visible on the actual production site. Thank you. It's, it's part of the, why it's not instantaneous is we have a content delivery network um, provided, donated by Fastly. Uh, that um, accelerates delivery to users by caching, right? And because of the caching, caching sometimes delays visibility of new changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it just fastly does a wonderful job of caching for us. We've been really pleased their donation is much appreciated. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thanks. All right. So any others? I'm going to grab that those answers because we touched on those in the session already. Any other questions that you have? I've got, we've got about five minutes left before we would end our hour. Oh, just a related question. Maybe if nobody has questions, just to continue discussion. Uh, when uh, we can con we contribute to the code, to the documentation, it's merged uh, immediately. Uh, this result we can see on Jenkins.io. Uh, how it is related to, and Jenkins.io, I guess, is the part of the 
product. Documentation goes with the product, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. How it is related with the uh, um, actual long-term builds and uh, weekly builds and uh, how permanent is this change and uh, how long it will live. So I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. So is your question how uh, how how does documentation get associated to a specific long-term support release or a specific weekly release? Right. So for instance, there are certain versions of the product uh, which are published on Jenkins.io and how documentation is related to this version of the product. Uh, and another question there is also Jenkins 2.0 documentation and how this is related to our documentation as well. Okay, so maybe maybe I'll use this as an excuse to give a, a quick overview of of first the the static website mm -hmm. is describing the current release. So we don't have uh, we we do not have historical copies or or choose your version style documentation. It's always describing current release. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, however, Jenkins and its plugins bundle help inside themselves, inside their binary. And, and those binaries, that help exactly matches the running version. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and therefore, the static website can describe only one version. It's the current version. Mm -hmm. But the Jenkins that I am executing mm -hmm. describes the version that is I am executing, precisely that version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. So, so the example for me is if I look at my, my Jenkins server that's here on, in my environment, when I look here at, um, let's pick something that needs help. How about I've got a failing test, a failing job on the Jenkins Git client. Oh, I don't. How about an unstable one? Here's one. This thing is has some tests that are failing. And if I want to know something about it, I can find when I click Oh, I need to pick a different job. Let's pick this one. I click this one. When I click configure, it's going to bring up a panel with a bunch of question marks on it for help. Mm -hmm. Like this little question, oh, I just went off screen. Now we have to shrink. The Jenkins user interface is getting work. And this is a hint why. See this question mark over here on the right? Yes. That is help that is built directly into the product and is tied is exactly with that version of the plugin. Mm -hmm. So that online help tells me precisely what this version is able to do. Mm -hmm. Did that did that assist? Yes, absolutely. All right. So we will do this again next week. I will stop the session now and post a, a copy of the recording. Thanks very much for your time. Look forward to see you on the Gitter channel. Remember that the Gitter channel is here. It's called Jenkins CI slash docs. And I'll send each of you a copy of the notes so that you've got a link to them. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, Bye. it was very, very useful. Thank you for your help. All right. Yeah. Have Thanks a lovely so day. And we'll talk to you in a week. Thanks.